years back as we were just getting the monastery started. I happened to be at a meeting one time. I was talking to one of the nuns from England. And the issue of chanting with translations came up. I said, well, we've, we've done our own translations. She said, oh, how, you, how do you translate Ahang Sugita Homi? I said, may I be happy? She almost fell out of her chair laughing. Their chant is something like, may I abide in well-being, which sounds more formal. But I still prefer ours, because it's very direct. And it comes right down to everybody's true wish. They want to be happy. But when you say it, sometimes you feel a little embarrassed. It's so commonplace and so ordinary. But you can make it deep. As the Buddha pointed out, if you're really serious about pursuing your happiness, you have to develop qualities like wisdom, compassion, purity. It's not a selfish desire, true happiness. And since it lies behind all of our actions, and because so many of our actions actually end up creating suffering, it's something we really should look into. Take your happiness seriously. Look into what really does cause suffering, what really does cause happiness. When the Buddha defined the, the wisdom faculty and the factors for awakening, it was basically insight into what is skillful and unskillful in the mind. And that relates directly to the question of what truly leads to happiness and what leads to the, its opposite. Again, I know one scholar who objected to that. He said, wisdom should begin with the th three characteristics. But the three characteristics find their true meaning in the context of the desire for happiness. In other words, if you're looking for happiness in something that's inconstant and stressful, why hold on to it? Try to find something better. So all of our desires aim at happiness. The reason there's conflict in the mind, though, is because we have different ideas about what will, what will be happiness and what will lead to it. But as we pay careful attention to our own actions, what we do and we say and we think, we begin to see clearly what truly leads to happiness and what doesn't. And this is why we meditate, to get the mind clear. So we can see these things for ourselves. We can listen to what the Buddha said and decide that it makes sense. But it doesn't really take hold in the mind until you've been watching your own mind for a while. And learn how to look at your mind objectively and see, yes, there are certain things that I'm doing that are not in line with true happiness. Why am I doing them? That's the other good part of the meditation, is it gives you a good, solid foundation inside so you can look into this question and not be threatened by the answer. So always keep that ahang sukita homi in mind. May I be happy. Each time you come up against a difficult decision, ahang sukita homi, and then figure out based on that what would, really would lead to true happiness. Happiness that wouldn't change on you. Because so many times we do get a little bit of happiness out of our actions, but then it turns on us and bites us before it leaves. We want happiness that doesn't cause any pain at all. And as the Buddha pointed out, it is possible. Which is why there's no reason to be embarrassed about ahang sukita homi. May I be happy. Keep it direct and simple, straightforward, to the point. Don't let other things come in and obscure it.